The queen of the 47s, Heather Connor. Welcome. Hey. Can you hear me? I know I'm a pretty short person, so I want to make sure the mic was good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. All right. So who would like to ask the first question for Heather Connor? First, Heather, do you want, is there anything that you want to say? Um, well, I mean, we had a goal. We didn't hit it, but I guess, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I think going into here, I felt very confident. Um, but some health issues came about um, pretty much last second, where about an hour and a half before weigh-ins, I had a ovarian cyst rupture. So um, a lot of pain on my left side, but, you know, you just – you do what you can. And I had the right people beside me. They knew about it. So it's not like I'm running to social media to let them, hey, you guys. Um, the people that need to know, know. And they just continued to motivate me the entire time with encouraging words, even when like I was scared to death to be bracing against a belt. Like, so if you saw me walking out with deadlifts, kind of like holding on to my belt, it was to alleviate pressure until the final second. So we did what we could. Yes. Do you think that that, I mean, I think you're known for a very controlled descent and mm -hmm. squat, and that's what we've seen from you in the past. Mm -hmm. Did that affect your, your descent and your bracing even more? Because it, it seemed like you were being a little bit more careful on your descent today. Um, so I typically go slow anyways mm -hmm. on the descent. I am more controlled due to my scoliosis making my um, pelvis turn. So if I'm a little bit too fast, I will hip shit pretty significantly. Um, but because, and that's on my left side where it's turned. So because of that ovarian cyst, you know, rupturing, I think it just added a little bit more pain to that area, mm -hmm. um, which it did make bracing pretty difficult. Um, with loading the 193.5 for your third deadlift, was the goal solely, um, was the goal ever potentially to consider pulling for the win or did you know after bench that you were just going to go for the American record deadlift? Um, the goal from the beginning was always to hit the Carpino. Okay. Um, it was never to win um, because I did want to solidify my ticket to Worlds. Um, I've had a, a few national championships under my belt, so it's one of those things to where uh, when knowing what was going on, I had to come to terms with myself, like this is what I would have to do. Um, so I could, and I the technical table was like kind of looking at me like, are you going to try it? I'm like, no, because <laughs> it's the, the risk worth the reward at the end. You know, um, after that final deadlift, there was a lot of pain. Um, so, you know, again, I'm talking to the right people, showing them like this is what's happening, running to the bathroom to make sure everything's OK. Um, and from the sounds of things, it's normal. <laughs> so um, the good news is I don't have to be rushed to the hospital or anything, but I also have to go and get it checked out. So, um, yeah, we just – you got to do what your body can do that day. And honestly, like, it was getting really tough, but it was still kind of moving. I was like, hey, is this going to happen? <laughs> but um, I assumed Stephanie, uh, my friend over there, she didn't yell loud enough. Uh, so we can probably blame her for me missing that. I always told myself it could be a little bit worse. I'm still here. You know, I'm still capable of squatting. There's pain, but there's movement. Um, and it's, again, one of those things, like, you have to kind of be realistic with yourself. I'm almost 32 years old. I'm not this young chicken running around. Like, this is, um, I might be in bed for a week. I don't know after this. But um, it's, it's coming to terms and taking accountability as a, athlete like that's your responsibility to say to somebody that's handling you this is what's going on um you know there was a shift at the very beginning um, i did have my actual coach with me um, unfortunately he was removed from the warm-up area so that was a plot twist um so thank goodness i had somebody with me who could come back and step up because that could have shifted my mindset a little bit um it didn't like it was just a little weird for me because nothing like that has happened. Um, I know it's happened to other people, but uh, I think my mental 
Lake State was kind of like everywhere at that point. Like, oh, there's this pain. Oh, my coach just left. Um, oh, I got to put the pressure on somebody that was just coming to spectate, you know. So, again, if you have those right people in your corner, like, it kind of takes your mind off of what's actually going on. I just want to say, first of all, congratulations for actually competing. I think that says a lot about you yeah. as a competitor and as somebody who um, showed up in, under adverse circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, being obviously in pain and then not having your coach. Um, did the mindset shift a little bit for you when you felt like, okay, now I'm just, like you said, kind of going after the Carpino versus mm -hmm. strategizing against another competitor? Well, everything's a little bit strategy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think if you don't – if you come into a competition with no strategy, mm -hmm. you're already about to lose. I always have A, B, C game plans. Mm -hmm. And it was always – every plan was to reach that. Um, but, again, like, you can have this great, you know, training leading up to a competition, and boom – something happens um that's just stuff that's out of our hands and that's kind of what I have to keep telling myself this is out of my hands I can only control what's right in front of me right now so my strategy had to shift a little bit um and I did lower my number some uh the only one I did not lower was my squat because I felt very confident with that um but I also changed up my second and third attempt some because of that pain um, and again, like you can be one of those ego lifters and say, you know what, I can push past this pain. I can do this. But again, once you reach a certain age, you got to kind of step back and say, I actually cannot push past this pain. Um, cause it will get significantly worse. But I think going into anything, you have to have some form of strategy. All right. Last question for Heather. Anyone have one? Okay. Uh, last question then I'll ask is just um, you face a really strong competitor out there, mm -hmm. Jessica Espinal. You want to say any words about Jessica's performance or um, what the future looks like, you know, with Jessica? I think she has a lot of potential. Um, you know, as somebody that is young, she has a big future in the sport. She has a smart coach on her side, um, Jason. I, I do want to make sure I say Jason and nobody else. Um, I like Jason. He's very intelligent. Um, and I do think going to Worlds, she will have to shift some because, as we've seen in the past, international judges, a lot stricter. Mm -hmm. no, not, that's not to say the judges here are bad, but they have their standards, but international is a whole new game. Um, I do think that's enough time for them to fix some technical things um, because when you get to Worlds, it's you miss a lift, you lose and you're going against very, very strong women, but she's also a very strong woman. Um, so I think, end of the day, if they, you know, strategize, like Matt Gary was talking about, they will be able to put something nice together. But now is the time to do it. Not a week out, <laughs> wondering if you hit elbow depth, because, you know, it's, it's one of those things like, oh God, now I gotta post this, and the internet's gonna see it, and they're all gonna have their opinions, and. Young people, they get in their heads a lot. Um, so hopefully there's more constructive criticism than there is actual criticism on things. Anything to help boost the lifter's confidence rather than just rip it apart. Um, so hopefully if that happens, um, I can kind of step in because I know she'll reach out. And um, she wanted to hug me immediately when I got off. But I was rushing to the bathroom. I was like, just, just give me one second, you know, um, because I do like to give due diligence to the person and congratulate them. This isn't the first time I've ever lost. But at the end of the day, you got to you got to be the good sport. Right. You got to make sure that you are still somebody they can reach out to at the end of the day, no matter if you're winning or you're losing. Because, again, like at the end, we are a team and we are trying to get you to worlds to be the best that you can be. Um, so. I think there's a big future as long as the plan is correct. All right, Heather. Well, thank you so much for coming to this. Really appreciate it. No problem. All right. <laughs> thank you.